Let's talk jobs now with David Kelly. He's a J.P. Morgan Fund's chief uh, market strategist. Of course, as you just saw, John and Dom staying with me. Uh, these numbers that came in at 8:30, slightly above, slightly above your consensus. Uh, yes, a, a little bit better. But I, I think what was nice is the overall breadth of the report. I mean, everything that was supposed to be up was up, and everything that was supposed to be down was down. And that was that's that's a really nice picture overall. Things like temporary workers were up very, very sharply. That's mm -hmm. always a very good sign. And the other thing I think is really interesting is wages didn't change at all. And so what we've got to see. It's, it's almost a perfect scenario for the stock market where you've got an expanding economy, but because you've still got a lot of unemployment out there, wages are being held down. That's helping margins, and I think that, that's a very positive sign but, for but, corporate profits. But, but someone actually say that, you know, say that that's perhaps a negative sign. I think that wage growth, we haven't seen that in four out of the last five months. So, and what does that mean then for consumer oh, spending and then for the economy? Well, it's, 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 not, it's not good news for workers, uh, but, uh, but it's, uh, we still have enough growth in disposable income coming from other areas. For example, dividends going up. You know, it's, it's not a very fair economy. But, but that doesn't mean the economy can't grow. Well, David, so, so speaking of the overall inflation picture, if that wage growth isn't there, you're taking a huge component of inflation, say, off the table, right? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, does that bode well for, for the entire economy as a whole, if you can keep inflation down? The Fed's been so keyed in on that core inflation. Yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely. And I, it's important not to overreact to this inflation threat. There is an inflation problem in the developing world. There is not an inflation problem in the United States. In the United States, inflation is always and everywhere a compensation phenomenon. If you do not get wage growth accelerating, it's so important for everything in the, in, in the in, in economy, you're not really going to get inflation that sticks. So I think it's important not to overreact to sort of a bump up in core inflation or, or, or other numbers. With wages low, we're not really going to have an inflation problem. So what point does the sentiment towards the stock market change? Because Mario Gabelli was on this show this week, and he said a year from now, it's going to be a very different story. I'm going to be, uh, I have to be a real stock picker as opposed to just being able to buy a lot of stuff and seeing it go up. Well, I, I, think, that's, I think that's true. Uh, over time, it's going to stop being just uh, a matter of the bounce back from the disaster. Uh, but I, I do want to emphasize, sentiment is actually still quite negative. W when we look at numbers on mutual fund flows for March, uh, we're going to see outflows from U.S. equity funds in the month of March, and we're going to see big inflows into bond funds. You know, we had a small window where more money was going into equities. But uh, yeah, in March, it reversed. So we still think that a lot of individual investors are very conservatively positioned as our corporations. And that gives you, a, so as that money comes back, in as we move back to normal, that's really the tide that is allowing us, so you know, overcome some of these waves of uncertainty we've seen in the last few months. Um, you know, when you talk about inflation, you're talking about wage inflation, yeah. but what about the oil price? Oil will never cause inflation in the United States. It could cause a recession. The, the problem about oil is, if you take a gallon of oil and a gallon of milk, you know what the difference is? If a gallon of milk goes up a dollar. The American consumer is, is poor, but the American farmer is richer. The money stays in the country. If the price of a gallon of gasoline goes up a dollar, the American consumer is poor, um, but uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is richer, and the money flows out of the country. It is a deflationary um, impulse upon the U.S. economy. So when I see oil prices go up, I don't worry about inflation. I worry about recession. You worry about recession. Okay. At what point, though, could we, could we see an oil shock then? I, th I think we're OK in the 100 to $120 barrel range, but if we, if we, if we spike higher than that for some reason, then I, I'm much more worried. Uh, David, really quickly, um, you, we were talking about this all yesterday, of course, those Fed release, you know, the release of the Fed documents yeah. and, 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 you know, who, which bank tapped, you know, tapped the window. Uh, does this change your outlook at all or, uh, you know, with the banks? Uh, no, it doesn't change my outlook. I mean, I think we, kn we knew about an awful lot of stuff that was going on at that time. We didn't know the exact details. Uh, but I think there is an important point here, which is I think there are things in our financial markets which are secret for a good reason. I don't think anybody at the Fed's trying to hide anything, but it's very important. Some, you know, it's kind of like you know, the, I don't uh, as subscribe to the WikiLeaks philosophy that everything should be out there. Hmm. There's some things which should be kept secret for a good reason. And if a bank's in trouble, you don't want the whole world to know about it necessarily because you don't want to start a run on the bank. And so I, I, I think. But at a certain point, maybe they make that. Uh, exactly. Historically, kind of you can go back and look at it. I, and I think you could, you've got to have watchdogs to make sure that nothing nefarious is going on. But but sometimes things that are secret should be secret. Yeah. Uh, David, earlier uh, you said something interesting uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking about you know the. Um, a, a continuing rally, right, in the equity yeah. markets. You're saying all this money in March actually flowed out of equity funds into bond funds, mm -hmm. right? One of these days, you agree with Bill Gross that it's going to it's going to squeeze these guys, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, no 
nobody is going to lose their shirt in the bond market the way they did in the stock market, so long as they're not leveraged. But I think uh, what we really think is people just need to be balanced. I mean, we've had a 30-year bull market in bonds. The peak day for the 10-year Treasury yield was September 30th of 1981. It's 30 years ago. Mm. And 30 years will breed a lot of complacency. And I, I just think a lot of people think uh, are overly scared of the stock market, are overly scared of risky assets in general, right. and feel too comfortable about fixed income. I and mean, they need to be more diversified, more balanced. Well, I, I have to say, people got burned in the stock market earlier this year when you did start to see some money flow into funds and then all of a sudden it seemed like the world was collapsing. They, they only got burned if they tried to time the thing. I mean, it's what, what's so clear about the last few years is that if you were disciplined throughout the thing, if you balanced and rebalanced your portfolio the way you're supposed to do and just ignored all of what was going on, you'd actually be, your portfolio should be higher today than it was before the financial crisis started. You, well, your job as a financial advisor is to, to advise a broad range of clients with different mm -hmm. kinds of needs and desires, yes. right? So if you're looking at fixed income investments, they do still serve a purpose, right? I mean, even if, even oh, of if interest rates start to rise. Of course, and, I, and, I, and absolutely people should have fixed income in their portfolio. But what I would say is this. If people are looking for income, they need to get income from a diversified set of sources. For example, we think dividend income will be going up. Read income looks very good around the world. We think people should look at home and abroad. Don't just go to fixed income to get income. But are your clients, are you having a hard time getting that message across to your clients? No, actually, it, it is beginning to resonate. I mean, we're, we're, we very much preach this mantra of balance, and we are seeing plenty of people putting money into funds that do actually produce a stream of income from a diverse set of sources. What's going to be the catalyst for this reversal in the bond markets, you think? The end of the 30-year bull run? Well, I, I think actually the, the Fed tightening is, is uh, and, and moving towards tightening. Getting rid of QE2 is one thing. And then at some stage, they're going to change the language around when, you know, how long short-term interest rates are going to be incredibly low. Mm. And as that changes, it's going to push up short rates. Now, I know that people think that when short rates go up, you could have a flattening of the yield curve because people right. think the Fed's ahead of the game. That's not historically what happens. When short rates start to move up, long rates start to move up too because people realize the party may be coming to an end. Okay. Last month was a great example where you had better thanks to the jobs report and the market ended the day lower. What did you make of the market reaction to the jobs report? I'm not surprised to see it. People keep saying, look, you get a better than expected report, there's no reason to sell. But we did just end the best quarter for stocks in 13 mm -hmm. years. I know right. that's, you know. Well, yeah, well, the markets dealt with a awful lot of very bad news. Uh, in, in the first quarter and dealt with it very well. And, and as I say, I look at that report on jobs, it's about as good as it can be for the stock market because it's holding down the wage component uh, while allowing a Is good job Is it still gets. a good indicator, though, for the markets? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, well, in the, in the end, you know, I... I, I talk a lot about long-term investing. In the end, it is the economy that determines the markets, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And when we see the economy steadily improving, that is a very good sign for the, for the stock market.